I will first tell the well-known origin tale of the Jersey Devil, just in case anyone hasn't already heard of it. In 1736, there was a woman named Jane Leeds who lived in the Pine Barrens in South New Jersey. Jane Leeds, also known as Mother Leeds, had 12 children and a good-for-nothing alcoholic husband. When she found out that she was pregnant yet again, she cried out in frustration, Let this one be a devil! Some months later, she went into labor, surrounded by her family and some midwives. A short time later, she gave birth to a perfect baby boy. But, a few minutes after being born, the baby boy began to transform. He started to sprout fur and feathers all over his body. His head became like a donkey's with big red eyes. He continued to grow larger in size, with big leathery wings. His hands turned into claws and his feet into hooves. Lastly, he grew a long forked tail. The once beautiful baby boy started emitting an ungodly scream. creature then jumped up and flew out of the chimney, making its escape. In other versions, Mother Leeds is a witch. The creature, instead of a donkey head, has a head like a goat with horns on top, and it slaughters the majority of the people who are present at its birth. One piece of evidence to this story is that in 1736, there was a Japhet and Deborah Leeds that lived in the area. The couple had 12 children, and this is known for certain because that same year, Japhet wrote a will dividing his property between his children. This other origin story doesn't say that there is some winged creature in the Pine Barrens, but possibly explains why people would believe so. In pre-Revolution America, there was a Quaker landowner named Daniel Leeds that lived in Egg Harbor, New Jersey. He had nine children, which may or may not have contributed to the legend, but what did add to the legend was the fact that his fellow Quakers considered him to be an evil man for three reasons. Firstly, he was a land surveyor who was very loyal to the crown. Secondly, he was one of the counselors to the very much hated first governor of New Jersey, Edward Hyde, Lord of Cornbury. Lastly, because of his almanac. Daniel had interests in demonology, angelology, astrology, Christian mysticism, and natural magic. Therefore, Daniel thought it was a good idea to put astrological symbols into his almanac that he released in 1687. But the locals considered this to be blasphemous and destroyed many copies. In response to this, Daniel included even more mysticism in his new almanacs. And the locals treated the books the same as the 1687 edition. Sometime in the 1690s, Daniel converted to Anglinism and started publishing anti-Quaker pamphlets. In 1716, Daniel decided to retire from the almanac business, and his son Titan took over. Titan continued to use astrological symbols in the books, but unlike before, the Leeds almanac started to become popular. It became so popular that it rivaled Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac, and the two men quickly became competitors. In 1733, Franklin mockingly wrote and published in his almanac an astrological chart that predicted Titan's death to be in October of that same year. Titan didn't take the joke well, 
and wrote publicly that Franklin was a liar and a fool. October came and went, and Titan was still alive. But in response to being publicly insulted, Franklin mocked Titan's anger and suggested that Titan had indeed died and now was a ghost. A vengeful ghost that came back from the grave to torment him and to, well, publish almanacs. Franklin always referred to Titan as the ghost, even after Titan's real death in 1738. If these two men were behind the legend of the Jersey Devil, where did the description of the creature come from? In 1728, the Leeds Almanac began to include the family's crest. And in the family's crest was a mythical animal called a wyvern. But what of all the sightings? In 1820, Joseph Bonaparte, who was Napoleon Bonaparte's older brother, witnessed the Jersey Devil while he was hunting on his estate. In 1951, a group of boys claimed to have witnessed it, and in 1957, rumors sprung up that people had seen the creature's corpse. In 1960, a reward of $10,000 was offered for anyone who could capture the Jersey Devil. Sightings still continue to this very day. Do you believe in the Jersey Devil? Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. And if you already have, thank you very much. Yeah.